We're here on the Chuck Van Show on KGRX tonight at here at the Jackrabbit off San Pedro Road, and I'm very lucky. I'm getting to talk to one of my favorite musicians of all time, Lars Fredrickson of the Old Firm Casuals, joins me tonight. And uh, it's been a while since you've been here in San Antonio. Uh, how you doing this fine evening in San Antonio? I'm good. You can you can put in Rancid and Stomper '98 and Oxy's Midnight Runners and The Last Resort. You can put in whatever you want. I, yeah. I and when I did the artist spotlight with you, uh, I think uh, last week I I did mention Oxley's Midnight Runners cool, cool, and cool. Stomper ninety eight. Awesome. Um, yeah, no, I, it's I been a while. Really... Sorry, I'm sorry, but go ahead. Sorry. No, I didn't. I didn't really mention Rancid because most people know you from Rancid. Well, yeah, it's fair like enough. The, the other yeah. things, you yeah. know, I wanted to feature. Well, some people think that things. like I've left. You know, I mean, some people think I've I quit Rancid and now I'm doing. It's like this band's been going on for eight years. You know what I mean? I remember getting in the bastards. Like I would, I would, I would literally say from the stage, mm-hmm. "I'm not leaving Rancid. I am. I'm in Rancid. Rancid's not going anywhere. Like we're going to be here for another twenty years." And literally, I swear to God, some kid would would come up to me and either go, "Why did you leave Rancid?" And I'd be like, "Dude, did you not just did you watch the show?" Or you said Rancid's not going anywhere. What is that supposed to mean? And it's just like. What the fuck are you talking about, bro? You know what I mean. So, just to be clear, you know what I mean. You're you're still in Rancid. Yeah, oh yes. Okay. Okay. We, Card we've, carrying member. We've, we've we've cleared that up. Mm-hmm. Um, but now you know the band you're here with tonight, the yes. Old Firm Casuals. Um, for listeners who might not know, how would you describe the band? Uh, it's definitely oi street punk, uh, rock and rolly kind of style. You know, I mean, uh, the music I grew up listening to. You know, whether it been you know. Cockney Rejects or Last Resort or The Business or, you know, Foreskins or, or whatever it was, you know, um, that was that was like my Ramones kind of thing. You know what I mean? So, I mean, I, I did love the Ramones, too, um, but but that was kind of the music that really kind of grabbed me and pulled me into this this thing, you know, that I've been doing now since I've been, you know, since I was basically 10 years old. My brother was a skinhead, so. You know, I got into, I got exposed to the whole thing through him and, um, you know, his buddies. So um, if I were to describe this band, it's it's basically, the it it's my interpretation of the music I grew up listening to. Just like Rancid is, but this is kind of all my kind of own thing. Like we, you know, everybody does take part in writing the songs. But like the, 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 I guess if, if, uh, for lack of a better term, the vision of it, I guess it's, 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 it's an oi band, you know? And, and with oi band and, you know, like, like skinhead punk rock or whatever, people that may not know about the culture or the scene might look at it as like maybe a negative connotation. I don't what know. What would, what would, what would you say to somebody who might just, who's dumb and doesn't know the culture well i might know, look at it you know i don't know I, I don't know how 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 you could be dumb in today's world you know i know that there are a lot of dumb people i mean when you're celebrating things like the kardashians and fucking american idol and all that bullshit like that yeah. you know you celebrate like the celebrity shit that's the stupidest part about america in my opinion but i think that like information is so accessible now just because of the internet and tv and so on and so forth like you literally can go educate yourself about any sort of thing. You know, I mean, the skinhead thing started in the 60s with, and, the, and the, the, the soundtrack was Jamaican music, reggae. You know, that's what, where the term skinhead reggae comes and from. It was, and it was a very blue-collar thing. It's very blue-collar, very working class. You yeah. know, and where I grew up, you know, in Campbell, you know, we were fucking working poor before there was a term. You know what I mean? So th- the street music, I was always – I was always gr- – uh, I always gravitated to like the the hardcore kind of rock and roll, whether it was like, you know, when I was four and five, I loved Kiss because it was Mm -hmm. like the most shocking thing, you know. Um, And then as I got, you know, then it was like ACDC and Cheap Trick and then the Cars. And then, you know, me and my brother watched Rock and Roll High School in 1978, 79 or whatever it was. And then he, he, a buddy of uh, ours, Joe Linehan, who was a skinhead from Leicester in Mm -hmm. England, had moved into our town. And that's kind of where we got turned on to the whole skinhead thing, you know, and all the punk shit. So, um, and little, you know, and then that was when the kind of the heyday of the, all the oi stuff that was happening, Four Skins, Last Resort, Cockney Rejects, The Business, blah, 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 blah. The list goes on and on. Um, and, uh, but for us, it was just, you know, it was our music, you know I mean? The, it was like a lightning bolt, you know, like a lightning bolt hit me. Like, 
oh, there's people that feel the same way I do. Mm -hmm. They just have different accents. You know what I mean? So, you know, it was, for us, it was, it was our music. It was our thing, you know? Awesome. And uh, I know, obviously, with your outfit tonight, you're a big soccer fan. I am. And you did, uh, the Old Firm Casuals did the official song of the San Jose Earthquake. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. What actually got you into soccer? Um, actually, it was my grandfather. My mom and dad got divorced in um, 70, I guess it would have been 73, 74. And my mom was a Danish immigrant. So she's not even actually an American citizen. So I'm basically first generation American, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and when they got divorced, I moved. We, we went over to Denmark because my mom didn't know if she was going to just keep us over there. My dad was pretty abusive, alcoholic, you know. Had a rough childhood himself, was made ward of the courts when he was four years old, grew up in uh, CYAs, which is California Youth Authorities, juvenile halls, mm-hmm. when, they, when they couldn't place him in a foster home and things like that. So, you know, he was pretty fucked up, you know, and that sort of like that family genetic, I guess, that gene sort of trans, you know, sort of, you know, did not skip a generation in, in that way. But, uh, you know, we moved over to Denmark. I think it was uh, we were there for a while. And my grandfather... Um, before World War II, um, he was a goalkeeper for his, for his town team, Sikkerborg FC. And um, I don't know if they were Sikkerborg FC at the time. But um, anyways, he – in the backyard of, of his house um, – and this is like, you know, basically uh, in the middle of rural – Denmark, you know what I mean. So, and on Yulin, the the main the main island there, and uh, he sh- he 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 showed us what a soccer ball was, and you know that you use your feet and the whole fucking thing. And I think that you know that uh, that sort of introduction to it is what me- made me love the game, you know. And uh, then, of course, you know, flash forward to you know the '80s music. I mean, a lot of these oi bands were were singing about their favorite you know, soccer teams and stuff like yeah. that, you know, so it just seemed like, you know, and then when we, when I was a kid, we had the San Jose earthquakes mm-hmm. when, when they played at the Spartan stadium. So, you know, I've always, you know, gone down there. So, and how was it that they let you do the official song for the well, team? You know, I knew some, I Joe Cannon was one of the goalies and mm-hmm. at one game, me and a bunch of my friends were there and he came walking by and his brother is a pro, pro skateboarder. Mm-hmm. And the guy, one of the guys I was with Mike V um, he owned a skate shop down in Orange County and, uh, he knew his brother Colt C- Cannon is, I guess is the, the, the name of his brother. And he said, Hey, I know your brother Colt, you know? Um, and Joe said, you know, Colt. And then we, then we started talking and, you know, blah, 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 and blah, blah. And somehow Rancid came up and, and he's like, yeah, you know, I, I used you know, I've listened to your band for a long time, blah, 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 whatever, you know, just, and then. Uh, he's like, Hey, if you guys ever need any tickets for, for games? And he's looking at me, he said, Hey, you know, uh, you know, just call me up and here's my number. And we became friends and, uh, I was a season ticket holder anyway. Mm-hmm. So I already had tickets, but, um, we started talking about some stuff and, and he's like, uh, at the time, the earthquakes, their, their theme song was done by E40. Okay. And, yeah. um, yeah. you know, who was an Oakland Bay area mm-hmm. guy, obviously, Bay area but guy. I don't think it had anything really – his theme song really had anything to do with the game or whatever it was. And Joe knew that as well. So he says, I want you to come down and meet the, the guys in the office and, and uh, let's talk about – because Rancid had a song called Black and Blue. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have a song called Black and Blue. And uh, the idea was is when they scored a goal, uh, you know, that they, they would play Black and Blue because that was the Earthquakes color scheme. Black and blue. Mm-hmm. We're screaming. We're screaming black and blue. So I sat down with them all and, uh, you know, I explained, you know, hey, this is what it is. They all knew who I was. They all, you know, obviously uh, knew, you know, about uh, you know, the, the music and so on and so forth and how it could, you know, that I was from the Bay Area. I used to come see the team, blah, blah, whatever. And I said, well, listen, um, they said, well, what about, a, 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 you know, I said, I have a song. You know, and maybe we could use it and maybe you guys would want to use it. Long story short, after that first initial meeting, I, I talked to one of, the, one of the head guys down there a few times and nothing ever came of it. Hmm. And then 
about two years later, uh, somebody from their office called me and said, hey, we heard that you were going to write a theme song. Uh, this guy's now moved up. We're this part. Can you do it? And I said, well, you know, honestly, like um, I've, I've written this song. I'm going to record it. And if and whether you guys want to do it or not, it's not up to me. You know, I mean, like you can if you want to use it. Cool. If you don't, I don't really give a fuck. I'm not writing it for you anyways. I'm, I'm writing it because of my love of the San Jose Earthquakes, right? And the song is... Never never Say Die. Never Say Die. Yes. And I've played it on my show. Oh, awesome. Actually, one of the first couple shows, I think I actually played it. Awesome. Um, but with that, um, one of the cool things I actually really um, read was that you teamed up with Tony Hawk, the San Francisco Project Homeless Connect. Yeah. How did that all come about? Well, you know, I mean, you know... That's, that's some really kind of personal stuff for me. Mm -hmm. And I don't really share that too much because it's something I believe in, you know. And I don't really want to get in it too much because it's not something about – I don't – you know, how do I explain it? Um, it's very personal to me and I don't really wear it. I just kind of do that kind of stuff. Off the radar kind of, yes. if you will. Because, okay. you know, so that's all I can really say about that. And, you know, I was – Looking at your sneakers. I'm a sneaker collector. <laughs> yeah, right, right. I've looked at your Instagram. You're a big Adidas guy. Yes. Um, what are your favorite pair of Adidas that you own? Oh, shit, man. I, you know, my wife teases me. She says I got more shoes than Imelda Marcos, you know. <laughs> no, uh, you know what? My girlfriend says that's <laughs> me too. I, me I, you too. know, I loved, I've sneaker. always loved Adidas, you know what I mean? That was kind of – I never had money when I was a kid to have them, mm -hmm. you know. So, I mean, maybe you were lucky you got a pair of Sambas, yeah. you know, and because uh, they were cheap. You know, they were like $25, if not, if not less, you know, but uh, favorite pair. Collaboration with whatever team. You know, I, you know, I've um, I'll always loved the way that the Bermudas are. Mm -hmm. uh, the Buna, Bermudas are sick. Um, some of the Topangas are cool. Um, she, I, I love all the special drops, you know, especially the ones of recent. I actually went down to that shop in Argentina and met Carlos. Um, I, I saw that on Instagram. Yeah. Like the, yeah, yeah. And he was cool, man. He was, he was super cool. And I, and I actually bought a, uh, uh, cause they made him a model, mm -hmm. you know, with the yeah. Argentina colors. So they, that was the only size they had because I'm, a, I got a big foot, right? So it's like, you know, finding a size. His store got basically cleaned out after that documentary came out. Yeah, and uh, my buddy Skin, who works at Adidas, uh, head of the skateboard department, he was the one that that hooked it all up for me. So through a buddy of mine, Gavin O'Brien, who you sang for the Faction. Mm -hmm. Oh old, yeah, old, yeah, old skate punk Cavalero's band. band. Yes. Well, see, me and Cabby, you know, we grew up together. Mm -hmm. You know, that Winchester skate park was right around the corner from my house. Yeah. So I used to go watch Cab skate, Peters. You know, all them dudes, you know, and I was when when I was growing up, uh, you know, the faction were kind of the big deal. There was faction, Los Avidados, Ribsy. Um, and I, there's actually pictures of me sitting in the kick drum when I'm about 10 or 11 years old. When the factions playing their set, the Necros play oh, the, the back uh, this backyard party um, at Ronnie Tannehill's house in Campbell. And um, the kick drum kept moving. And they put a cinder block in it, and it kept moving, kept moving, kept moving. So they just stuck me in there. And you can – there's pictures of me You were the weight. Yes. You were the weight for the yeah. kick drum. Because I was small, you know, and, and – and, and, uh, but, no, I've known Cab for years. He, and one thing I will say about Cab, he was always the most humble, genuine dude. But me and Gavin, we go to a lot of Quakes games together mm -hmm. still, you know, because Gavin and my brother Robert, God rest his soul, were really, really close, you know. So um, – and, you know, I grew up going to see fact. I saw the Faction's first show, you know. Like, I, you know, I saw all those bands play hundreds hundreds of times. But as far as the Adidas go, man, you know, there's so many. I mean, fuck. There's, they they, uh, they did, did that Adidas Prost, which is like, like a lot of uh, – it's, like it's like a trim trap. Mm -hmm. And those are the most comfortable ones I definitely have. So you're not wearing Yeezys then? Even no, hell no, no, no. <laughs> That's not my trip, man. That's not my trip. I like the old school sneaker, yeah. you know. The the original, the original yeah, yeah, Adidas. Yeah. And uh, you know, we've talked Rancid, Lars Fredericks and the Bastards, Stomper ninety eight, Oxley's Midnight Runners. Yeah. 
What's next on the horizon for Lars Fredrickson? Well, you know, the Stomper 98 record just kind of came out a couple months ago. So I'm going to go back over in August and do some more touring with those guys. Oxleys, we're actually recording in July, a little after July 4th um, in, in the Bay Area. Those, so they're going to come to me this time. Because normally we would always, always go down to, to, to meet every, Mike and Dave and me and Jesus would go to Phoenix easier but then something happened with the studio mm-hmm. fuck you butler he he didn't have he didn't have this the time that we want that we could all go in so i was like fuck it can we do it up here because i got an engineer michael rosen same guy does casuals and you know did all, a lot of those rancid rancid records mm-hmm. so uh we'll do that and then the old firm's gonna go in and do um a new record should be out next year. I was say, uh, you've done a lot of EPs with Old Firm. A lot. Um, are you doing a full length anytime soon? Well, we did the full length that this means war. Uh, yeah. The thing about it is, is that we never either, it was either time or money. Uh-huh. And and so, you know, we put out the, the Butcher's Banquet, which was seven yeah. songs. and, and But um, there, there was 11 or 12 recorded, but we didn't have the time. Because mm-hmm. Casey plays in Crow Mags. As you know, I play in fucking 100 bands. And... Um, so I do, and I was just like, you know, this is pretty concise and pretty cool for where we are. And I never thought, I don't think, of, uh, I, I, you know, I don't think it's that important to put out a record every time. Mm-hmm. I think if you're just doing it, I mean, just put out what you have. Yeah, just put you out know? an EP. Yeah, two, three songs. I love to, and Yeah, keep, keep doing it. I love EPs and shit. It, like it that. keeps people interested because you're you're 100%. putting shit out every. You know, every yeah. couple months, every few months. Exactly. You know? And then Wartime Rock and Roll was the last one that we did on Rebellion Records out of uh, Holland. And, and um, yeah, so, we, you know, it's definitely time for, like, a full length, though. Because I've got a bunch of f- fucking songs. And, you know, there, like I said, there was four or five songs that got left off of the actual the Wartime and the Butcher stuff that we'll probably go back to. Mm-hmm. You know, because they just weren't as refined and like i said time constraints we wanted to have we were going we had a plan to tour europe and i was said and england and stuff i said i want to have something new mm-hmm. and so we just decided as a group like well, well what if we and it was it was it was a process to go back and forth kind of what are we going to do you know are we going to do you want to just you you know we either if we do this full length record then we we won't have anything while we go over there yeah you know so and uh with the show going on tonight what can we expect from the show well, I hope a lot of fun, you know. Um, it's the last little show with LCV, which is, you know, I, I'd love to tour with those guys all the time because they're a great bunch of dudes. I mean, I, you know, I, I've always been a fan of the lower class brats. You know, I first mm-hmm. heard them, you know, and I, I was just like, this, these guys are the shit. I mean, they've been around for a long fucking time. You know what I mean? They're a great bunch of dudes. You know, they've gone in through a couple different, uh, uh, obviously some different, changes with the band and stuff like that band members and stuff but their music always is consistent and gets better and better and better so for me like I, i'm you know that's the only bum out is that i'm you know won't be able to uh do any more you know and this is our first time to texas and you know it's been great i i didn't i honestly didn't i didn't i didn't expect the responses that we've had you know and yeah. it's 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 been really cool because you, you don't really know. I mean, we don't we, we've the only state that we've played outside of California. Well, you know, we've done a few other states, but we haven't played. We haven't done like a U.S. tour before. Mm-hmm. Um, we've played in like New York. We've played in uh, Massachusetts, Arizona, California um, and Illinois. And I think that's that's pretty much. Was there one? Oh, and yeah, no, it was all it was all. And we played a few times. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, those are the only states we've actually really played in, you know? So, um, you know, so you don't, you don't know what's going to happen because first time you go through to a, to a town or, or whatever it is that maybe people are more checking you out. Yeah. And, and that's why, you know, I'm listening to music online and all that. And, you know, I dug the music. And so when I saw y'all were coming, it was like, I'm going to promote the shit out of this oh, show thanks, just to get Appreciate as it. many people out here as possible to hear some good fucking music, you know? Well, thank you. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's we're going to do 45 minutes. We'll do our best, you know, and, and hopefully people will enjoy it. And, uh, you know, that's all you can hope for. I mean, I'm going to be doing this 
until, you know, forever, as long as I can, you know, as long as I'm physically capable of doing it, I'll, I'll make music. I mean, I've been doing it and been in the scene mm -hmm. th at this point, three, three quarters of my, of my life. Wow. You know, I mean, it's since I've been, I'm, I'm going to be 47, uh, well, I, you know, 10 years old was my first show. And then since I've been 16, I've been playing in bands, you know, so I, you know, this is what I do, you know, but thank God my kids, you know, grasp and understand what I do. And my wife, I got a very good, you know, solid foundation at home, mm. you know, and I'm a family man, you know, that's, and that's something that I really enjoy. And, but, you know, coming out and being able to do shows like this, this is where my heart is, you know? Yeah. Not taken away from anything, from any other band or whatever else I do. And I've played all different kinds of places. I've played stadiums and I've played shitty clubs with no monitors. And, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I played them all. I played squat. I played everything that you could, anything that you possibly could think of. I played on the back of a truck. I played in someone's backyard, in someone's front room, and, you know, in, in, in the Munich Olympic Stadium in front of 120,000 people. You know, I've had all those experiences. Thank God. You know, I'm very grateful and lucky to have to have had those experiences. But the things that I remember the most are these types of shows. Yeah. These are where my heart are. The more know? intimate. Like, yeah, man. Cause getting I, close with the fans and, 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 yeah, and talking I don't, to people. I don't, and, yeah, I mean, you know. to me, this is my scene. You know, it's not – I don't even – that is, you know, I've got so many people that are friends over the years – and this is what we've dedicated our lives to, you know? So to me, I, I'm no different than anybody who comes to see yeah. us play, you know? You know, that's the way I kind of see it. I don't I don't really think of people as fans or anything like that. I just think we have that commonality, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And that's the only thing that I've ever really, you know, yearned for in my life is that commonality with people when, when it comes to music. Because music was always the most important thing. And music always brings people together. And uh, amen, you know? And... uh you know, I, I I like to think of myself as as uh, just a you know a f kind of family man, <laughs> yeah. you know that that enjoys this music. You know, I love my family. I'm I love my friends. I, uh, you know, I love the music I make. It's the only thing I've ever had and the only thing I've ever got. You know, and I've never taken a handout from anybody in my mm -hmm. fucking entire life, and I don't owe anybody anything. And you know what? And that's to me is is sick is success. It is, you know, so, and I'm not embarrassed of anything I've ever done. I'm not, I'm completely and utterly proud and I fully fucking accountable and I don't really give a shit what anybody thinks good or bad and I'm going to be doing it. So whether, whether you like me or not, I'm here, <laughs> so to speak, you know, with my shoes on my and Adidas, your Adidas, yeah. your Adidas and, yeah. and your you're playing music for yeah. the people that that love it, and oh. hopefully there's a lot of people here tonight. Oh, well, hopefully. And I gotta say, Lars, it's been an absolute pleasure. Oh, man, pleasure having you on, on the show, uh, getting to sit down, and talk to you, and talk about sneakers. Yeah, talk about music, talk about soccer, S yeah. skating, everything, everything. Yeah, right so, on, man. Well, I, I appreciate you having me, and thanks for all the support. Awesome, really do. Appreciate Thank you it. for being here. Oh, thanks, man.